I, I noticed from the program that, in fact, this is about me provoking you to beat us in terms <laughs> of growth of chaplaincy. And I actually hope I do. Uh, seriously, I hope I do. I want, want to tell you a little bit about my own story as a framework for where we've got to with Sports Chaplaincy Australia. Uh, it was in 1996 uh, when Sports Chaplaincy really was about 12 years old as an organisation in Australia. It was actually called something else called Sports and Leisure Ministries back then. Uh, that I was approached to consider chaplaincy to the Panthers. And I have to say, it sounded a bit like Grant's story. I had absolutely no idea what sports chaplaincy was. I had no concept of how it might work in the context of a community. Uh, and in fact, in uh, the Australian context, most of the chaplains were involved at an elite level. Uh, so I hadn't had much contact with them because I wasn't operating at that sort of level in any way, shape or form. I was out in Western Sydney actually doing community ministry. But I got involved in the Panthers in 1997, and I guess at that stage there were probably about 60 chaplains around Australia. They were mostly in motor racing, in rugby league, at uh, elite level, at, in uh, Australian rules football, uh, which uh, Grant said, I've just moved to Melbourne, so I'm trying to learn how it works, but it's awfully awkward. And uh, in cricket, and <coughs> essentially not much else around the place. There's a little bit going on. I guess three or four years after I started at Penrith, the rugby league guys were getting together on a regular basis, but really sports chaplaincy in Australia had started to really just hit a, a ceiling. There wasn't much hap happening. And in uh, 2005, Cam Butler, the, those of you who were here last year will have met Cam, Cam took over as national director of the organisation. And really it was probably back to where it was when I started with about 60 chaplains around Australia. But over a period of time, a whole revisioning of what sports chaplaincy might look like in the Australian context began. And it was really a revisioning that said, we wanted to put a chaplain into every single sports community in Australia. How many do you reckon there are? Well, you're probably not going to guess. Uh, our estimate is between 40 and 50,000 sports communities across Australia. <clears throat> That's organised sports community, so we're not talking about the guys who play darts in the local pub. But uh, organised sports communities across Australia, there are approximately 13,000 churches in Australia. So we have started to work out that we need a chaplain from, three chaplains from every one of those churches in terms of putting people into sports communities. At that stage, growth it really started, our goal was to put 40,000 40, chaplains in place, uh, where around 60 to 70 chaplains. That means we've only got, let's work on 40,000, 39,930 to go. We began that process and Cam really began as a principal part of that process by deciding that the best way to go was to not try and run it as a big organisational structure but rather as a, as a committed group of people who sought to do ministry across our nation. who wanted to get involved at a local level with local sporting communities and wanted to promote chaplaincy generally. who wanted to engage with and, and try and connect a local church community with a local sports community through a chaplaincy agenda. A really love and grace and mercy within that sports community without another agenda to do other stuff but just to be a representative of Jesus in the way that Jesus would work in that community generally. About four years into that journey, Cam gave me a call and said, you want to coordinate New South Wales? <coughs> I went, okay, I've got plenty to do. New South Wales at that stage has six million people in it. How many people has New Zealand got? <laughs> okay. So my first thought was, well, how much are you going to pay me? To which the answer was nothing at all. Do you want to do this though? I thought, I can't think of a better pro project to be part of. In, Australian, in Australia, I've spent the last 20 years of my life trying to connect church and community. Sports are no-brainer. You know, it, it, it just makes sense to connect the church with the local community, get involved in the sports club. Um, I'm jumping a little bit here, but I'm going to tell a little story about Bright. Bright's a uh, little town in the snowfields in the, of Victoria. Bright's got a population of about 1,600 people, except in snow season when it swells to 20 to 25,000 people. 
they have a footy club, a Aussie Rules Club in Bright. It's got two teams in it. Walk into Bright, and I spent a weekend in Bright probably three or four months ago. Walked into the little Bright uh, community, staying with the chaplain. Uh, the chaplain, by the way, has, is bipolar. Okay, he's got mental illness. Uh, he's a guy who's uh, used to be involved in sport, uh, marathon run background, but uh, is is a chaplain in this local community, and. He, he, he takes me into two of the cafes in town on Saturday morning and everybody says hello to Phil, the club chaplain, because that local footy club is the centre of that community. Come on, you Kiwis, there's going to be local rugby union clubs that are the centre of your communities too. There's going to be netball clubs that are critical in your community. So, Phil, two, two cafes. Everyone's asking Phil, how's the team going to go this afternoon? Everyone's talking about the game. That afternoon, two games of footy. It's the semi-finals. Everyone in town's there virtually. Uh, the local Church of Christ sponsors the footy club. <laughs> Phil goes to the local Church of Christ. There's an enormous amount of respect in that community to the church because they're engaged with something they care about. We've started to see that make a difference in <coughs> communities across Australia and I reckon that's what Sports Chaplains is about. It's about seeing changed communities and changed individuals and changed lives. Over the last five or six years, and I have to say it sort of started in New South Wales because I was stupid enough to put my hand up and say this is a good idea. We've seen an incredible growth in sports chaplaincy. We're around it, we're at 550 at the moment, but it's a bit hard to count. My wife is our membership secretary. She's currently process, processing 40 applications for accreditation as chaplains. Uh, she gets probably eight to ten every week at the moment. Uh, sports communities across Australia are asking for chaplains. We've got a project at the moment of putting chaplains into a major Aussie Rules League in Eastern Melbourne. 43 clubs. Started at the beginning of last year. We put 18 chaplains in place. We expect to have filled all 43 clubs by the end of next season. But because churches are starting to see the point, but it's still hard work. We don't have a demand problem in Sports Chaplaincy Australia, we have a supply problem. We've got four, approximately 4,000 requests for chaplains from sports clubs. And we're not talking about Christian sports clubs here, although some of them are, some of them are connected to church communities. We're talking about primarily Aussie rules, but increasingly. It's, it's an enormous challenge to just respond to the need. Okay, our recent chaplains, what sort of sports are involved? We've got a clay pigeon shooting chaplain. I'm a pacifist, I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> we, have a, we, we've just, we have a rollerblading chaplain. We have a crossfit chaplain. We have a, a chaplain who's just been appointed to goalball. Who, who knows what goalball is? Goalball is one of the significant sports in the Paralympics for uh, visually impaired people. We're seeing chaplains appointed across all sorts of sports, uh, but <coughs> still, we're seeing a significant influence at the elite level. Who's a petrol head? A couple of you. Some of you might have tuned into Bathurst if you've at least been interested in the V8s. There are a couple of Kiwis that are pretty good drivers. <laughs> uh, before, I don't know if it happens over here, but five minutes before Bathurst starts, our lead V8 chaplain leads in a prayer at the track, it's broadcast on national television in Australia. That didn't happen five or ten years ago. It's trans I believe it's transforming our culture, it has that potential. We're not that different, eh? <laughs> it's a great opportunity, people. Just And, and churches are, are buying into this. Actually, I was talking up the back. Um, the Christian Community Churches of Victoria, which is basically the Open Brethren community in Victoria, have seen it as a way of engaging their local community. Denominations are buying into it. The Baptists in Victoria have done the same thing. In Perth, the High Anglican Diocese has decided that they need to be more engaged with working in their community, and they've bought into sports chaplaincy. Uh, one of our biggest supporters in Australia right now is Hillsong got an extraordinary impact from Hillsong in terms of them getting engaged in chaplaincy. 
they've, they've employed a full-time worker to help them put people into sports chaplaincy positions through Sports Chaplaincy Australia. It's a great opportunity. It's going to happen here too. I'm excited for the next three years here, actually, to be perfectly honest. There's some extraordinary things that are going to happen. And we've got a lot more sports communities than you, so my challenge is that you, could, you grow at a faster rate than we do. We reckon we're going to grow at somewhere between 25 to 30% a year over the next three to five years. So see if you can beat that. There you go. That's the challenge. 